Namaste. What's your name? Natasa. Can you say that again? Natasa. Natasa. Mm-hmm. Um, this is my first time coming to see you and listening to you. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> um, it was very interesting listening to the other questions um, and speaking about the, the ideology around violence. And when you were speaking, for me, the, the main, most violent ideology is white supremacy and, and patriarchy. And from a woman doing this work in a, in a woman's body where uh, gurus are mainly men, um, my, I've got two questions. <laughs> One of them is um, around what your experience has been like doing this work in a woman's body, speaking as a woman. I feel that I have been more supported in my work uh, by men and not men who looked at me as a female but men who deeply appreciated the, the knowledge that I was bringing. And where I have met the highest resistance is from women throughout, throughout. And I've always pleaded with not just my women disciples, but also the women that have come to the satsangs. I've spoken about it time and again, that if women don't support women as spiritual guides and teachers, we are doomed to having only men as our spiritual teachers. It is the women that have stood in the way, without exception. Through envy, jealousy, I do understand that uh, there are, you know, many spiritual seekers, women, who are quite developed beings in that specific area of spiritual transformation, or want to be gurus. I can understand that there is a degree of envy um, because of all the accoutrements of, of dharmic Guru Vada, Guru Shishya Parampara, uh, which are seen as, as, as something to aspire to, and then, then envy grows there. There have been open discussions about it, in fact, even in satsangs. So it's not something that is a hidden thing. And I go so far as to say, Natasa, that it has been women who have prevented women from being spiritual guides, not in the far past, but certainly in the 20th and 21st century. And so, I think the power of men has been overestimated. It is more the power of women. If women stand up, I can do a hundred times more. Each woman who stands with me is actually empowering me more than ten men would. But the support has come from men, not from women. And not because men are more powerful, not because they are more powerful and can achieve more in this world. The battle is much more when you don't have women to support you. And I do have very, very staunch and loyal female disciples. You need loyalty as a, as a spiritual guide because you say things which are not always nice to hear. And if you have someone who's loyal with you, you have more backing. And I'm not talking about what they speak, I'm talking about the internal feeling towards me, you know. So, and by the way, since you had mentioned white supremacy and the patriarchy, it's the white patriarchy that has supported me. And I don't see the white man today as anything powerful. They have the highest suicide rates in the world because they're, they're, losing, uh, they're losing context. Although they do have a position because the white male has created a lot of the systems that we rely on to, to survive. I mean, they run the power grids, they run the, the, you know, things like that, I mean, in the West I'm talking about. And that damning has now 
turned against the very ones who are doing it because those men who upheld the systems that supported our societies are incapable, they're not even men anymore. You know, they've lost the ability, they, they don't even know what they are anymore. And it's growing. I mean, if you look at the, the trans movements in America, the gender questions, they are very interesting because they're transformative and they are, you know, pushing the, the, the paradigm of the conceptual. It's one thing to push that paradigm of the conceptual and to move into a transformative state. It's another thing when that entire thing is extrapolated onto a functioning society and that society is expected to continue functioning as it has before. It won't. It can't. And that becomes dangerous. It becomes dangerous to the to all the structures in society. And danger is okay, danger is, is good if you want to transform something, but what are you transforming it into? Where are we going with the gender discourse, with the white supremacy, patriarch discourse? Where is it taking us? It shouldn't take us in that direction where we lose our individual freedoms. And there's a danger of that, that the Western secular democracies will devolve into socialist systems. There is a palpable danger of that. Thank you. Um, you mentioned about the transformation. Um, so in order for there to be transformation, the, the woman, the feminine, had to rise in order to become more equal within the world, which, as you were explaining before, that still isn't the case. So there needed to be a push, there needed to be a transformation. You know, the, the, the gender thing is maybe part of it, um, but what would you say the role as a woman, regardless of colour, religion, is within transformation, within their own spiritual practice and within the global kind of um, increasing the, the global consciousness, forgetting about geopolitics. The women's liberation movement was important. It had its validity and just as you were saying, these, these uh, movements have helped women to rise to equal status in society. And there is just no discussion about it that it was needed. You have the first wave of feminism followed by the second wave of feminism, and then is a fourth wave of feminism. And that fourth wave of feminism is stoop to conquer, bend in surrender, give the man his rightful place in the world again, while maintaining your strengths. Your strengths arise not from criticizing the male, but from surrendering to the truth within, to the antar guru, the antar atman. It's a very real thing which women should consider seriously to live in this new world, to live with a sense of dignity and strength also. And that, that posture is one of bending down and surrender to the truth within, trying to distinguish between this loud, never-ending, demanding, insisting, pushing, yearning, opinionating voice of the ego, and the very quiet, centered truth impulse. If you as a female are able to discern between these two and act from the truth impulse, or at the very least refuse actions emerging from the ego, you are already more in a surrendered state. You are already more in a state of strength, which then qualifies you to give the man his rightful position back and so 
create a, a dance which you yearn for anyway. Women, even today, however powerful they are and however um, woke they are and however tough they are, and I'm talking about you know, heterosexual women now in this context, they appreciate a strong man to support them, to stand with them, to bear them children, to support those children, they do. And those who, those women who don't see the positives of raising children are another discourse, that's already another discourse, but if you, if you can sense somehow that you can contribute to society and firstly to yourself by raising kids, then you would learn, you would teach yourself how to be with a man so that he is allowed to do what he is good at and you can deepen in what you are good at. And that then results in, in that, in that uh, leela, that dance between the male and the female, which is what the whole story is about. If women continue to give in to their ego to that extent, they're not going to be able to deal with men anymore. Men become redundant for them. And when men become redundant for them, they also start replacing them with women because there's a deeper understanding. But the, the juice of life then is, is less. And then there is a, an emptiness and a void that arises from that. So that's why I call it the fourth wave of feminism. Stoop to conquer, bend down, know who you are, that is the key. Not, not putting down uh, the male and, and trying to rise above him. You don't rise above him by criticizing him and you don't have to rise above anything but you strengthen to support. Men are fragile creatures. They are not what they're made out to be, and more so increasingly. They're fragile creatures. I used to say they're like Ming vases. Keep it nicely on the shelf and polish it every day and, and, and put some flowers in it. That's what men are. And they need to be treated that way. If they're not treated that way, they, they retreat and retract. And then they just foray out to get what they want, which is sexual encounters, and they don't want the responsibility and they don't need women other than for that, which is not how the idea is, because now uh, women are giving in to men in order to satisfy their desires as well, but they're losing out in the long run because the one uh, key to the magic cave that they had has now been taken away from them. The doors are all open, there's no magic cave anymore, so no one has to pay anything to enter. And then, what is the negotiating instrument that women have? That is their negotiating instrument, it's always been. So the fourth wave of feminism locks the cave. There's entry, it's negotiated. I mean, talking about strategy, by the way, that's a strategy. And I'd like to see what's wrong with it. It's not anti-feminism, it's not sexist, it's not, you know, anti-male. It's pro-truth. So, unless one has tried out that strategy, one can't really know if it works or not. So that's how the, the, the whole uh, thing could evolve into something more... How else do we see society then in 50 years if things go on this way? Where's it going? Sperm banks? Uh, strange women, sort of beings that are not grounded in their own uh, material realities, you know, not grounded in their bodies. This idea of various genders and, uh, you know, that sexuality, the female sex, the male sex, is not determinant of the gender or how a person feels. These are all outgrowths of an ego that has gone beyond the ability of the body to handle. So 
the more the ego grows and the more desire grows, the more the fulfilling of desire becomes the raison d'etre, the main reason for existence, the less the truth is allowed to play out in any situation. And the more the suffering increases, it's physical suffering, it's emotional suffering, it's conceptual suffering, it's transformative suffering, the reduction in the ability to create anything, it's unity consciousness down to zero, the inability to feel oneness with the other. So you have increasing numbers of people that are focused on fulfilling desires and it has reached a point where it's a very big mess and the whole transgender phenomenon is part of that phenomenon of the, of the collective push towards the transformative, no doubt about that, which is happening and, and America is always the, the you know, the boiling edge of, of any transformative movement in the last uh, couple of hundred years, any big transformative movement. Even though it is happening and it is transformative, it also is destructive. It is destroying a lot because it's arising from this overinflated ego, which means the next step is that those egos have to deflate. What is going to deflate those egos in the, in the transgender movement is the fact that people will realize at one point that it doesn't bring them happiness. The happiness they sought as teenagers, as young adults, in changing their gender in order to live better is a false promise and it hasn't held up. And so, that will be the beginning of the deflation which has already begun. But the price that is paid for is the problem. Mm, could I ask one more thing? Yeah, my question would be about then what would be the role with men who aren't able to see the feminine in their, in their form, appreciate the feminine in their form, um, and are seeing them for only those gender roles. And I feel like the feminist movement has come a long way, um, but the, the masculine movement, I don't know what to call it, still has a way to go in order to, to kind of come to that balance. Um, what would you say would the role be for the masculine, for the, for the man. The feminist movement arose because the male was not able to sense the female outside. He was not able to sense what he's dealing with and so he behaved in a way which antagonized the female outside. Why did that happen? It happens because he's not tuned into his own truth. Why is he not tuned into his own truth? Because he's under the specter of religion, which top downs to him how he has to behave and how not, in the interests of greedy capital. That's the play. When he doesn't tune in, to the, to the soul, to the truth, to the center of his being. In other words, becoming aware of when the ego is taking over. When he doesn't do that, he also is unable to connect with the woman outside because the impulse of the soul of a male body, in a male body, will impulse that male body in such a way as to deal with the female outside. That, that is his biggest challenge. That is his biggest challenge from the day he's born, how to deal with the female outside. And if he's tuned in to the truth, he's going to be able to do that. If he's living in a top-down uh, culture, he goes with what is told to him and he's instrumentalized and the ego is supported in that whole process. So he's not able to relate to the female outside, which is why feminism had to rise. You know, it had to, there was no way around it. And so, he now is faced with a world where he has no more responsibility, he's becoming gradually redundant 
I'm talking about over hundreds of years, not just tomorrow, but it is something one sees already. If he wants to take up his real role in society, he has to train himself to bend down in surrender to that source, to that truth, because that is where the guidance will come. He'll strengthen up into being more of a male. The more male he is, the greater his chances. The real maleness arises only in a male who is connected with his truth. The more he's connected, the more he's in surrender, the more male he is, not the other way around because that surrender process is to pick up the weapons and that is the way the world should now evolve with each individual going more towards their own truth trying to discern between the ego and the truth impulse that is a concrete material thing a man can undertake to strengthen his own maleness does he want to do it? that's another question he has to figure that out but that will give him back his true maleness and women are challenging I mean that creature is such a challenging creature if a man has to deal with her he has to know himself else he's in trouble